Welcome back everybody. Today we are going to be upgrading our cooling solution in our video editing station. Now this already has every fan field. We've got the up here brand fans that we were testing which we have as our top exhaust, our rear exhaust, and we have two forward facing up here to push the air through our AIO water cooler and two cooler master fans to pull the air through our water cooler. Well, the issue is our cooler master fans are PWM, which are adjustable by how much load your CPU is under and a fan RPM setting that you can build yourself if you prefer. Well, the controller these run off of runs them at a steady speed whether you're at idle or under full load. They are great fans, they do move a lot of air, but when you're under load you would really prefer to have a higher RPM to exhaust that heat and get more air in. Plus, when you're at idle, you don't need them running at 1200 RPM. You can use a lower RPM. So, we're going to go ahead and get all of these out and get them replaced with these in win 120s which are PWM RGB they're addressable RGB so we're going to be hooking that up with our RGB fusion on our motherboard then we have these other cooler masters that we are going to put for our front intake so we have the, the same static pressure these fans as these so without any further discussion let's get into this and get this upgraded First I'm going to get the Wi-Fi antenna out of the way. This is an RG, this is a Gigabyte B450 Pro Wi-Fi. Good motherboard. Love it. It has two NVMe slots, which allows me to run my storage in the NVMe RAID. So, we will go ahead get the up here fans removed. Don't get me wrong, they're good fans. I just prefer an adjustable RPM range. They're more power efficient. They run at a higher RPM when needed. So you don't have constant noise, but you do get proper cooling. I'm just unhooking my fans from the controller board here. Sorry, you can't see the back side, actually. Let's turn this around so you can see. Our controller is now free, and I can unplug it from the SATA connection. This supplies the power and the RGB controller. This comes to our front fans. I'm working on rear fans right now, so we're just going to guide these cables right back out the way we routed them in the first place. Well, that one's out. And now we have the top one loose. So I can go ahead and remove our retaining screws for our top exhaust fan. Now 
don't get me wrong, these are good fans. They do move a lot of air. I just like the adjustability of the RGB fans. So we are just going to stack these out of our way. Get two up front. Get our controller out of the way. These are going to be our new exhaust fans. These can actually be wired in a series, so they can be controlled by the same port. And that's basically how we're going to run it today. You want your wires to face towards the back of the case for easier wire management, and that way you also don't have the eyesore of a rat's nest of wires in the front of your case. So before we install these, we're just going to go ahead and route our cables directly out the back of the motherboard tray. Make sure the open face is what you will see where the label is on the back, and I will show you on the next fan, is the direction of the airflow. I really should have put these screws in first to get the threads cut before trying to do this in the case. Works the same, just a little harder to do it in the case, even though outside the case you are doing it twice. Also need a better screwdriver. With a sharp tip and a ratcheting effect. These new fans, the first time you put a screw in, a little tighter than reusing a fan. That's because you're cutting new threads in the plastic. So there's one fan installed. That's this case here. This comes with four screws, which we didn't need because we already had four screws and the extensions for daisy chaining them together. I don't like the flap that these boxes put in here. It does keep the wires separated from the rest of the equipment you need. It's just such a headache to get it out of the box. But you know what? If a manufacturer goes out of their way to add extra support and protection in their shipping products, I'm more to trust them on putting the research and design in their products. Now, again, the Inway 120s. This is direction where the air will pull. It will exhaust out this side with the frame where the motor is mounted. When you're using an exhaust at the rear of the case, you always want it mounted like this. If you're doing intake in the front of the fan, you want it like this. The opening of the face where there's no frame and you can freely move your finger is the direction the air is pulling in and exhausting through. Again, we are going to route our cables directly over the motherboard tray and out of the back of the computer.
like going in an X pattern. That way you're not over tightening one side other than the other. You don't want to over tighten them because you can strip them very easily. that is a steel screw and you are threading a steel screw into a plastic housing for the fan. We will leave our RGB cable up top and we'll take our PWM cable and run it over to the side so we can daisy chain these together and not get our fan and RGB confused. So what fan port are we going to use? See one right here by the top of the power connector for our, our CPU power. Go ahead and slip that out. That way I can pass this back through and connect it to the top slot hiding the cable. <clears throat> that top motherboard header turned out to be more of a headache than what it needed to be. But she's fully wired up. Both of our fans now have power. And now we just need to cable manage and connect our RGB. So we'll take this rat's nest, get our RGB up here, this RGB up here, Use this magnet to hold it in place while I cable manage this rat's nest to power our cables. <clears throat> now that we have that secure, we can take one of our cables and run it down the bottom of the tray to pass it up through to either this header here or this RGB header down here. I think I'm going to go with the top one. So we'll just run these directly through to the front of the motherboard tray. Pass it through, and I lost my flashlight, there we go. Pay very close attention, there is a header that way you can adjust it from 5 volt to 12 volt. You do not want to hook a 5 volt addressable RGB up to a 12 volt header. You're just asking for problems there. But if you look at them, they tell you the key, the 5 volt, and the ground. And all you got to do is just line these up with the header. Simple as that. the rest of the cable out the back and we can take this one 
and we can daisy chain it to the other. That way, both of our exhaust fans will display the same color. They will also, where I have them daisy chained together for the power off of the same, being both of them being exhaust, they will run at the same RPM. Get our other one. <clears throat> On the RGB headers, we don't want them to come apart and we don't want the wire to ground out. If they do separate against any other component in the back of the chassis, there's plenty of metal back here. So I'm going to take a strip of electrical tape and wrap it up so it's tightly and secured and we don't have to worry about any grounding issues. After everything's been routed that way, we will just reroute our cabling. Back up and out of the way. Now we have both of our back fans. We can plug our CPU power back in. I can remember which way it was facing because I can't really see it. Box on top. Don't ever force these connectors. If they don't slide in perfectly easy, then it's the wrong slot for that connector. Now that we have our in-wind fans installed, we can move on to our radiator static pressure cooler master fans. Not needing any of these components, we usually end up with extra parts. Now, let's work on the front cables. Four package screws, one RGB fan. Get that out of the way. Four pack of screws, one RGB fan. Now here, we will be leaving our Cooler Master fans alone. We'll be loosening our bottom bolt. This is an H500 case from NZXT. I love the cases. Take these two screws out, and our radiator will gladly slide out of the way. First, we need to pull the rest of these up here cables through and out of the way. Okay, those are ready. We're going to be using these standoffs instead of using the four screws because we are now mounting to a radiator instead. Notice how they were facing forward. You draw the air in, draw the air in, and push the air through. Same with the bottom fan.
Now our radiator has been completely detached from this panel. We don't want to keep it like that. We do want to clear any dust residue out of the way. Start with our top pan. Placing our stud through and passing along to the radiator. These fans provide a very good coverage. Usually they have gaps in the edges, and I've always complained about that because that's air restriction. If this can't force it through those fins and there's any restriction, it's going to find the path of least resistance and escape out the side. These are securely right against it. It's tight. You're not going to lose no air that way. So we wrap these cables out the back. as we slide our radiator back into place. We will start our screws. This will be slightly different because in order to connect both of these fans, I'm going to have to use a splitter. So let's find the fan header we want to use for our front intake fans. Hmm. So, place our connection. Our first fan just pops in place. And then our second fan. cable that snagged. Replace our screws again. Take our fan cable through the back of our case and connect it to our other adapter. That is it. We have all of our AIO fans wired up. We have all of our rear exhaust fans wired up. These are all now RGB. They are all PWM. So now we can get proper controllable, controllable. Well, now we can perfectly control our airflow from the front panel all the way to the rear.
now that we have everything reassembled, only thing left to do is plug everything back in and boot it, program the RGB, and make a uh, fan profile to control our airflow. So let's get to that. And now you get to see the final product. As you can see, we have our addressable RGB fans up top in rainbow mode. Same as our Crucial Ballistics Max RAM. Everything else is set to red, either flash red or constant red as the back and the graphics card is. The two Corsair fans, Cooler Master fans, I am so sorry for saying Corsair. Those are set in the flashing red. The rest of the board is set as static red. The Gigabyte board is meant to pulse red, while the RGB RAM and my rear exhaust fans are meant to color cycle RGB. And if you look close enough right up here, you can see where our Cooler Master are running in blue. That was an issue. They sent us the wrong product but it is irrelevant now because of the fact that we do in fact have it where they're hidden and the color didn't matter. I didn't need RGB fans up front anyway. They were just the best option. Guys, this is very simple and intuitive. You guys have any questions, you can leave comments below. Please like this video if you liked it, if it helped you. Leave comments of any future builds that you would like to see and we will get them up there for you get subscribed for all future content we have the Aaron's upgrade and rant video coming soon we have the Xbox series coming soon and we've got other couple projects that are uh, we're not allowed to disclose right now but stay tuned for those get subscribed to be notified whenever make sure you hit the bell con icon so you can be notified when those videos are released we'll see you in the next one guys have a great day